Good morning and welcome to the house of the Lord. I'd like to welcome all of you who are worshiping with us today and especially those who are worshiping uh, with us online this morning. It's a joy and delight to be present together uh, even as we are separated here um, physically, pres physically separated from one another. Spiritually, we are together. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today is also a very special day in that it is the first Sunday since March that we are celebrating the Eucharist together, celebrating communion. And so we do have some special uh, instructions and description about how that's going to proceed today. Uh, one is that uh, I will be the celebrant and I will wear a, my mask and have my gloves on as well uh, for the celebration of communion. Um, when it comes time to receive communion, it will be contactless, and uh, you will please stay where you are in the congregation here. And if you are viewing online, there are some special prayers that uh, have been recommended to us to use during that time, such that you can feel spiritually connected uh, to the Lord and spiritual communion uh, by praying those prayers during the distribution of communion. And that goes for folks who are online as well as uh, folks here uh, presently as well. And then finally, I'd like to say that um, no one need receive communion. If you're uncomfortable in any particular, any way, uh, just place your hands across your chest uh, or let us know and uh, we will ask God's blessing upon you today because again, we're in this really heightened time of caution and sensitivity uh, at this time. At St. Gabriel's, we like to say, to all who are weary and need rest, to all who mourn and yearn for comfort, to all who are weak and fail and desire strength, to all who wonder if God even cares, to all who sin and need a savior, this church opens wide her doors with a welcome from Jesus, the mighty friend of sinners. Let us worship the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. I'd like to invite you to join with me in saying together the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. 
For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Let us pray. O God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the hearing of God's word. A reading from the book of Genesis. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, we are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read our psalm together responsibly by half verse. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us. Nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor reward us according to our wickedness. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Peter came and said to Jesus, 
Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him and he could not pay. His Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children, and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused, and then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you have not had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. Lord, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think with them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you this morning. Take our wills and mold them and make them yours. To the honor and glory of your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Once again, some of you came in a little bit after the service began, but I wanted to say this is a very special day and that we're able to um, now finally, since mid-March, March 15th or so, be able to celebrate communion uh, here at St. Gabriel the Archangel. So it is a special day for us, and, and we know many people are unable to come and uh, are viewing this online, and, and I want to welcome you as well here, of course, and just say how much uh, we are caring and praying for you as well. And we pray that you would have a sense of the spiritual unity between yourself and the Lord here through the Eucharist as you uh, participate by viewing it and praying the prayers that are provided uh, here for us. I'm grateful to the diocese, uh, to Bishop Kim and her team for uh, putting out guidelines for us on how we can use, uh, distribute communion and celebrate communion here uh, together today. I don't know how it will be for you today, but um, when, I, when the theme comes up of forgiveness and forgiving, being forgiving and forgiveness, it's often one that people have a lot of positive response to because it's something that touches on each one of us at any particular point in time. This understanding that we are forgiven uh, by God, that we are to extend forgiveness to others, and it poses some challenges here. But I hope today that we'll be able to see um, here how God is present in uh, this mighty way uh, to not only forgive us, but to help us to deal with our stuff here this morning. So the title of my sermon that I've given is Forgiveness, Help Me to Deal with My Dirt. <laughs> help us to deal with our dirt. <laughs> I'll get to that in just a moment. But it is a universal topic. You know, I think back to uh, when I was in grade school, probably second grade, maybe third grade. And I was a little boy, and the assignment was to draw something freehand. We were in an art uh, unit at that time, and the objective was to draw and to learn how to draw, draw something freehand. And this little girl who was my colleague, you know, a classmate, uh, crossed the way from me a little bit. 
um, I guess was looking over my shoulder a little bit or something. And she raised her hand and said, teacher, Chris is not drawing, he's, he's tracing. <laughs> and I could just sense the anger and the heat coming up the back of my neck and into my ears, and my ears were bright red. <laughs> what was this little person here um, ass assassinating my character? <laughs> And you can see that even all these years later, I don't even know how many years that is, but all these years later, it still stings. <laughs> I have to listen to what Jesus says to Peter when Peter asks him, Lord, how many times must I forgive? As many as seven times? Uh, no, Peter, try 77 times or 70 times seven times. Forgiveness, the need for forgiveness, the need to extend forgiveness, the need to be forgiven, is something that is universal in all of us and with all of us. Sometimes you and I are the victims and sometimes we are the victimizers. Sometimes we need to be forgiven and sometimes we need to extend forgiveness from other people. All this to say is that you and I live in a moral universe. We live in a moral universe. It's a universe of oughts and ought nots of shoulds and should not. And even if the religious perspective on ethics and morality is being pushed to the sidelines, or so it seems in our secular world, even secular as well as religious people understand that actions have consequences, that there are oughts and there are shoulds, and ought nots and should nots. And Jesus, of course, has a lot to say about forgiveness. Throughout the warp and the woof of his ministry, many times he touches on the theme of forgiveness. For example, even times when it does not seem as though Jesus has been sinned against, he extends the forgiveness of sins, like with a disabled man whose friends bring him to meet Jesus, have to get up on the roof, they dig a hole, they lower the man, and Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. Of course, there's a lot around that about the Jews and Jesus' identity and sort of protesting about what Jesus is saying here. But the point is that forgiveness is part and parcel of Jesus' work, his ministry. And they would say, well, only God can forgive sins. Well, ha, ah, guess what? God's present with you here in me, Jesus is saying. Or think about the woman who is caught in the act of adultery. And Jesus kneels down in the dirt and writes some things. And, though, and then he says to the accusers of this woman, if any of you is without sin, you know, you can cast the first stone. And, and Jesus gets up and he looks at her and he asks her, woman, where are your accusers? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir. They've all fled away. And neither do I condemn you, he says. Go now and leave your life of sin. Jesus forgives sin. He extends forgiveness to others. And then, of course, there are the very words of Jesus from the cross. Luke chapter 23, for example, where he's on the cross and he cries out to the Father with all those before him who have put him there, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Forgive them, extending forgiveness to those who have committed a grievous wrong. You and I cherish the doctrines of mercy and grace that are woven throughout all of Scripture, like, for instance, this morning in Psalm 103. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is God's mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has our God removed our sins from us. It's a great gospel truth. Heather, Day, Tom, Heather Thompson Day yesterday, uh, followed her uh, a little bit on Twitter, and this is something that she uh, wrote yesterday or tweeted. She says, God gets in the dirt three times that I can think of, 
to create Adam, to bury Moses, to defend a woman caught in adultery. God is with us in the joy of birth, the pain of death, and kneels beside us in our shame. We can rest. God can handle our dirt. God gets in the dirt three times, she says. God can handle our dirt. And it's a great gospel truth, but our prayer today is help us to handle our dirt <laughs> through forgiveness. That there can be forgiveness is one of the greatest truths of the gospel. It's one of the choicest pieces of good news that we have to share and bring to the table as followers of our Lord. And yet it is something that we wrestle with ourselves, isn't it? We know that God can handle our dirt. Our plea is to God is to help us handle our own dirt. And there are some things, talking about forgiveness, there are some things that are so wounding, so grievous to us, so damaging to relationship that the lasting effects cause pain for years and years, decades upon decades after the events. How do we forgive those wounds? And if we forgive, is there a responsibility that we have to restore relationship or reconcile with that person? Now, admittedly, these are big questions for us to ask today, and the bishop has said to us, please have condensed services if you're going to do Eucharist <laughs> here for our safety here. So we can't cover everything. Forgive me for preaching a, a small sermon on forgiveness here this morning. But what it, it does raise these big questions. How do we forgive these wounds? And if we have been the person to wound someone else, if we have done something that we should not have done, we carry the burden of that responsibility with us. How can what we have done ever truly be forgiven, we ask? Can that relationship ever be restored? Is it up to us to try to restore that relationship? These are tough subjects. You know it, and I know it. That's where Jesus reflecting with Peter is so helpful this morning. Peter comes along and asks Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus says, no. Peter thought he was being generous. The rabbis had said three times is sufficient. <laughs> Peter says the fullness, number seven, fullness, seven times. Jesus says, no. Seventy times seven, or, or, or 77 times. The Greek is a little bit ambiguous in that regard. But at any rate, the point is, go on, keep on forgiving. Jesus is really clear in his answer to Peter, isn't he? He makes an exaggerated point using these large numbers to make a point. Forgiving someone without limits. And it's hard. And it's hard for us. Peter then hears a parable that we hear as well that Jesus goes on to share. It's like the, the kingdom of heaven is like a king and a servant, a slave, owes the king 10,000 talents. That's a huge number. Let's talk about millions here in the currency of that day. And that slave cannot repay it. The slave gets down and begs forgiveness of that debt. And the king has mercy and pity on him. And he says, I forgive you. And then that same servant who's just received the magnificent, magnanimous gift of forgiveness of this 10,000 talents goes to another person who owes him money. And he demands a pittance. 100 denarii, $10, and he refuses to grant mercy to that one. The 
That man has not received the fullness of the forgiveness of the king because he doesn't extend that to others. It's a warning to us, but it's also an encouragement. It's a warning to us that in order for us to be fully connected with the Lord, we are called upon and mandated to forgive and to go on forgiving. But it's also an encouragement to us because we can have the power to go on forgiving because we have been ourselves forgiven so much. We serve a magnanimous God, a gracious and merciful God who calls us into relationship, who calls us to extend forgiveness. I know it's hard. It's hard for me. I have that sting from 40-some years ago (laughs) still there. But even more importantly and less superficially, relationships that are broken, and they may not be restored. Some relationships are toxic and should not be restored. You have to sort of keep somewhat of an arm's distance until the Lord brings more healing. But forgiving is an act of the will, and that's important to do over and over again. There are many stories and examples in recent years and sad ones where forgiveness has been part of the story, but also enlightening for us as well. I think of one where the shooter went to an Amish town, a village, and killed some seven girls or so, and killed himself in the process. And after that, the Amish community came together and met with the mother of the shooter and extended forgiveness. And it was not an easy thing to do. But it's something that is motivated, I think, deep within the heart of the Christian who is tied into the Lord. Another story is of the widow of a man by the name of Alan Greaves. Christmas Eve in 2011, Alan, a retired social worker, had also been an organist at his church in his hometown in England and had gone off to play the Midnight Mass. Never made it to St. Saviors. Along the way, two young men bludgeoned him to death for no reason whatsoever, a senseless act of violence. A year later or so, at the sentencing of these two uh, young men, Maureen Greaves said this, I've had to forgive. It seems so easy to say I've forgiven them, but it's probably one of the hardest things in my life that I've had to do. And yet, having done it and repeatedly seeking to do it, I've found that I've benefited. I've not gone to bed with them on my mind. I've not gone around with shocking feelings over them. I've not gone over and over in my mind the replay of what happened to Alan. Because she forgave, she was able to have that burden uh, lifted from her. She says it's not been easy to do. We still suffer greatly because of his loss. But she says, I hope that those men would find some sense of true sorrow for what they've done. Perhaps they'll find that while they're in prison, a journey they can go on where they will be able to think of what they've done and turn away from such things and start leading better lives. Well, God forbid that we ever be in that kind of situation. But you and I are faced daily and and weekly with things where we are presented with the opportunity to extend forgiveness. It's not easy but it's clearly a mandate. I have to remember when my character might be under attack, I may find some sort of betrayal or character assassination, that forgiveness comes because I have been forgiven. I can extend it because the Lord has forgiven me. And the only way we can do that is if we are secure in the knowledge that God can handle our dirt. 
And because God handles our dirt, we can handle our dirt as well. And we can live truly in the knowledge of a compassionate King and Heavenly Father. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now I'd like to invite you to stand with me as you are able. Let us join together in the confession of our faith and as we say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all the bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or distress that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. And now let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for those impacted by fires and floods across our land, for those who bring relief to those who have suffered loss, and for the return of seasonable weather. We also pray this weekend, this is the Sunday following the anniversary of 9-11, the terrible tragedy that happened in New York City uh, 19 years ago. We will pray for those whose lives were lost. We pray for those first responders who are impacted to this day and suffer from whatever um, illnesses have occurred for them. We pray for those in special need at this time in our community, for Mike Cosby, for Dave Evans, Chuck Obermeyer, Bob Zinke, and Chuck Lowe Miller, for Margie Stewart, for Allison, for Ann Young, and Marcy Pearson. We also pray for Barbara Holmes and for Don Wagner, the brother-in-law of Larry Ellis. We pray also for the great-granddaughter of Ellen Snyder, Izzy. And also now let us give thanks for all the blessings of this life. We give you thanks, most gracious God, for the beauty of earth and sky and sea, for the richness of mountains, plains, and rivers, for the songs of birds 
and the loveliness of flowers. We praise you for these good gifts, and we pray that we may safeguard them for our posterity. Grant that we may continue to grow in our grateful joy enjoyment of your abundant creation to the honor and glory of your name now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we now offer thanks for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Mary Winkie, Kristen Tate, Sally Plummer, and Herb Ostertag. Are there others? And let us also pray for those celebrating anniversaries this week. Jerry and Suzanne Henderson, Dave and Sandy Evans, Lisa and Randy Swenson, Zach and Virginia Hood. Are there others? And now, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, thought, word, and deed, by, by what we have done, done and, and by what we have left undone. We have, have not loved you with our whole heart. We have, we have not, not loved our neighbors, neighbors as ourselves. ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have, have mercy on us and forgive us, that, that we may delight, delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and amendments of life um, for confess their sins, have mercy upon you, forgive you, and restore you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another with the kiss, the peace of Christ. God's peace. Peace of Christ. Thank you. Please be seated. Once again, a warm welcome to you this morning. Just like to share a few announcements with you here today, and you'll see these coming up in the trumpet on uh, Fridays. Uh, October the 4th, we're looking forward to dedicating our new organ with a special organ concert uh, recital given uh, here at uh, St. Gabriel's. It'll be at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. There will be an online registration that's necessary for you to attend, uh, but we do welcome you to come. And also, it will be live streamed, and so um, people will be able to enjoy that. Uh, Mark and I have been able to work it out such that uh, we know that we can get a good signal uh, here for a clear organ concert that is seen uh, and heard online. So, uh, God willing, that will be the case. It's, uh, uh, Rick Seaton from Bethany uh, Lutheran Church will be coming to play, along with Caroline and Mark as well. So, that's coming up pretty soon. Also, beginning a week from tomorrow, we're looking forward to playground renewal outside here in our lovely playground. Uh, it's so much of a community asset. Uh, we're looking forward to being able to uh, do some refreshment there of, of the grounds, uh, add a toy structure, a play structure for little kids. And uh, we do look forward then sometime in October, I think the 17th, to have a special dedication of that. We'd like to invite our community around us uh, to join in that. So we'd love for you to come to that as well. After the service today, Sheila uh, is putting on uh, SNL, which is Sunday noon lunch. And uh, that's an opportunity for our children, youth, and families to gather together, uh, have a little bit of instruction, and bring their own food and so on. So thank you, Sheila, for that work uh, here today. And I believe that's all the announcements at uh, this time for now. Um, it is a special uh, privilege for us to be able to celebrate communion today, and along with that comes the offertory uh, sentence here this morning. Let us offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good our vows as we come unto the Most High. in past. 
pastures green, he leadeth me, the quiet waters by. My soul he doth restore again, and in his love The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, 
take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemptional Father in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed upon him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand for the blessing as you are able. The peace of the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.